Okay, all right, <clears throat> here's the way I'm gonna do this. Um, some people have mentioned that they need a little more time and I think that's totally fine. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a pretty slow writer. So I'm hopefully, have, I've hopefully given you enough of a head start that we can, um, we can do this together, even if you are not quite finished yet. Let's have a look at how we can break this apart into uh, components for integration by parts. We'll choose our U and our DV. Uh, and then hopefully, if we do some careful algebra, the result that we're required to prove will just fall out. Okay, here we go. Remember that we select U and DV based on what's easier to differentiate and what's easier to integrate. And also in this case, um, we have this, we're not just like integrating randomly in any random direction. We are trying to get towards, recall, this IN minus one needs to appear somewhere, right? So that should be the clue that if I have uh, something which has a power of 2N, when you differentiate that once, you use chain rule, that's gonna bring it down to 2N minus one. That's kind of why I chose to do this in the first place, okay? So therefore, what have I selected as my U? It's gonna be this sign raised to the 2N of two theta, okay? And the reason why I'm coloring this is because when I put this into integration of my parts in a second, it's gonna be a mess of different terms and I just wanna help you see what is what, okay? So everyone sets it out slightly differently, but this is the way that always has worked for me. As soon as you've got U, I like to work out DU from there. So you can see my arrows sort of going across the page. Um, this is chain rule, right? So I'm going to bring the index out the front. I'm going to reduce the index by one. Bam, there's the two N minus one that I needed for my I N minus one of two theta. There's the outside derivative. And now I need to do the inside derivative. Remember it's sine two theta raised to this power, so I just need the derivative of sine two theta, which hopefully we remember is two cos two theta. There's u and du. Uh, that leaves the dv to be the other part that I broke out, that single sine two theta. And when you integrate that to get to v, um, instead of multiplying, of course, we're going to divide and just be careful because you're going from, um, you're integrating up out of sine. So therefore you're like, does cos differentiate down into sine? And the answer is no, it differentiates into negative sine. <clears throat> excuse me, so therefore we need this negative here to compensate if you were differentiating the negatives would cancel, give you sine two theta. Um, as we saw many times throughout our most recent assessment task, particularly questions like vectors, right? It's these done minus signs that keep getting us, right? So you get the hard part and it's the easy parts that we uh, get slipped up on. All right, so from there, let's remember what does integration by parts actually look like? It's the integral of u dv, which is equal to uv minus v du. But we also need to recall, in this case, in is defined to be a definite integral, not an indefinite integral. So therefore, we're gonna have our boundaries here and here, and also we're gonna have our boundaries uh, here on this. We're gonna have to evaluate what this uh, uv is equal to at our upper and lower bounds, okay? All right, so it's gonna, it's gonna be a very long line to begin with, but we need to substitute in all of our different components, which you can see I've colored up in here, okay? So hold on to your hats, here we go. First, I begin with my UV, which is uh, my, my blue and green bits here, right? So here it comes, uh, here's U, sine two N two theta, and here comes V, um, negative a half cos two theta, and I'm gonna integrate that from naught to pi on two. Now, ordinarily, I would just write out the rest of the line, but I'm just gonna pause for a minute just to highlight what's going on here. Here's that V, I'm just trying to keep the colors the same so you can see what's going on, and here's the U. Uh, it's almost like this question was crafted for this exact purpose. Look carefully at that U term, in particular, what happens when you start to put in your upper and lower bounds, because even though this thing looks horrendously messy, um, it's been crafted to, to come out reasonably nicely for us, just like in a Pythagoras' theorem question, they give you like nice round numbers, right? Think about what happens when you put in the upper bound, because that's the one you evaluate first. It's pi on two, right? So therefore, you're gonna go sine of two times pi on two. Well, what is that? That's sine of pi. Hopefully by this point, reflexively, if you picture the graph, right? You're like, what is sine doing when it gets over to pi? And the answer is it collides back with the x-axis. So it's equal to zero, right? So when you evaluate the upper bound, you've got zero times something. So I don't care what the other stuff is. So that's just gonna vanish, which is nice. And similarly, when you do the lower bound, you're gonna do sine of two times the lower bound is zero. So sine of zero. And thankfully, it's the same deal, right? So even though this UV term, it's like, ugh, gross, it's all gonna go. It's all gonna vanish, okay? So that is really promising for us. 
All right, there's the beginning. Now we do the uh, integral of V, <clears throat> excuse me, du. So we have our same boundaries, naught to pi on two. Uh, here comes V again, so it's that same negative a half cos two theta. Watch out for that double negative. That's obviously going to cancel shortly. Um, and then we're going to, I'm going to be, you guys know how I love to be exceptionally lazy. I'm going to grab all of this because it's just going to take forever to write. There is my du, okay? So that is all integrated with respect to theta. And you can see these terms here are the same. All right. Following so far, that's I n. What a mess, all right? Uh, we've already established that that first part, the uv, the definite integral, is going to evaluate out to zero. And then we just need to tidy up what is going on here in that integral of the, the minus of integral of v du, okay? We already mentioned there's the double negatives that are going to cancel. So I'm just going to signal, signal that here by going plus, plus. So I'm going to say plus there. Uh, they're not the only things that cancel, right? You can see I've got this half out the front, which is going to cancel with this two. So that's kind of convenient. Um, but it does leave behind, look at the constant coefficients in this long awkward integrand. It leaves behind this uh, n and this two. Okay, so therefore I'm going to pull them out the front and I might as well just keep that color consistent so you see where I did that from. That's a 2n out the front and it's going to go from naught to pi on 2. All right, what's left? Well, we've got uh, a couple of sort of paired up terms here, right? So uh, what color have I not used yet? I'm just going to have to pull out a new one, aren't I? Um, I've got a cos 2 theta there and another cos 2 theta there. So then right out the front, I'm just going to combine those into a cos squared. 2 theta. Um, and then the last thing that I have is the sine 2n minus 1 2 theta, which I needed because that's going to be part of i n minus 1. Okay, so hopefully you're following along with that. Let's just write it down. Sine of 2n minus 1 2 theta with respect to theta. Okay, now <clears throat> where is this going to go? Well, in order to get this, um, remember what result we're trying to head towards, right? Here it is right here. In order to get towards this, you can see you're in terms of i n minus 1. I n, I n minus one, I n, I everything, right? It's all in terms of signs. There it is, right there. So the cos squared that's appeared in my integrand, I need to get rid of that and replace it with some sign terms. And thankfully, we've already signaled it before earlier today. I can do that fairly easily with the Pythagorean identity. So two n's hanging out the front, not to pi on two. And then if I substitute, I'll keep with the same color so that we don't get too confused. If I substitute this for one minus sine squared of two theta, should have used bigger brackets out the front there, use some square ones so we can tell that apart. Everything along here is remaining unchanged. You can see here, I can start to um, combine powers and it's going to work out actually very nicely for me. Okay. Um, we're pretty close. I think we're on the tail end. It's mostly going to be algebra from this point, right? So if you're following along, I'm just going to expand out here. It leaves me with that 2n, the not to pi on 2. And then let's see here. So I'm going to have a sine of 2n minus 1 to theta because I'm just uh, multiplying that by one. Um, and then when you put these together, just be careful with your indices. Um, can you see that this is a two and you're adding it to this index? So two n minus one plus two, that brings you up to two n plus one. That's the original i n, right? So therefore, um, if I write that, it's a minus, careful for that, sine of two n plus one, two theta, and that's all integrated with respect to theta, okay? So just take a breath for a moment, look at this. You're like, oh, this is the term we were looking for, for i n minus one. This one is from i n. So clearly I can actually put this back in terms of all of our i notation um, and it's going to enable me to form the relationship that part one was looking for, right? So I can say on the left-hand side, i n. On the right-hand side, 2 n multiplied by, this term here is the i n minus one term. So it's right there. And then this term here is the i n. Just watch out for that minus sign here. Minus i n. Okay, there you go. From here, um, just because of time, I'm so confident that you can get from this point, just expand, collect your i n's and then factorize out. This is going to give you after a couple of lines of working that i n is equal to 2 n on 2 n plus 1 i n minus one as required. So I'm going to leave those couple of very simple lines in between for you to do um, on your own.